Hey there, everybody. Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of Album Homework Assignment. It's Sunday. Greetings, everyone. We've got uh, in the co-captain's chair today, going head to head, we've got Neve the Prog Nerd. And we've got Mr. Stephen Reed from the UK Connection and in the Prague seat and anything else that I assign him to do here on Sea Tranquility. Uh, we uh, were bad. We, we announced this one a couple of weeks ago, but we've all been so busy and, and Nita's going to school and doing all sorts of really important things, unlike us here on Sea of Tranquility. So uh, we finally got everybody together here. They've each given each other their assignments. They've had a couple of weeks with them. So uh, as always, ladies first. So uh, Neve, what were you given by Mr. Reed to listen to here? I think the past few weeks has been me trying to pronounce the name of the album. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I did enjoy it, actually. I hadn't heard music like that for a good, like, four or five years, because back then I was really into that kind of metal, but now I'm more into, like, the classic stuff, like your Iron Maidens and your Metallicas and stuff like that. But I really, I, I think the album art is, is really cool. I'm not going to lie, it, it's very cool. Um, if, it, it would help if I could know how to pronounce it. I've been spending a lot of time. Well, let's Stephen do. Here we go. Oh, yeah. thanks. Well, the, the band are called, I presume, Tripticon. Yeah, I, I got that one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. And the album is Eparistera Demones, which Lovely. I apologize to anybody who can say that properly. I believe that it translates roughly to on the left hand, the demons. Oh, that's, that's actually there you go. Cool. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed the kind of the slow riffs. I'm a massive sucker for that kind of stuff because I'm a huge Black Sabbath fan. So that kind of stuff is really cool. And the drop tunings as well. Really big fan of that. The really dark production as well. As I said, I'm doing production at the moment in uh, university. So I'm picking up on all these new keywords to talk about production. Um, so I really enjoyed that as well. And the tension that the band have created within the album to, you know, make it dark and cool and stuff like that and um it really reminded me as well of um the early opeth stuff which i love opeth as well um i think my favorite tracks were the third seventh and the second to last uh, all very very nice tracks i really like the the transition of well not the transition the um dynamic of a male and female vocalist i really like that a lot and they utilize that really well within that second to last track um and I didn't like how it was constantly in your face metal. I liked the kind of slower parts and more melodic parts of the album as well. Um, if I was to give some criticism to it though, um, the production on the bass is a bit thin. I couldn't really hear it at times. I don't know if that's to do with my headphones or not, but I couldn't really hear it too well. I wish I could have heard it a bit more because I'm sure it was really great. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, that's me. Interesting assignment. I would did not expect that at all. I'm, I'm well familiar with the band. So, um, yes. yeah, I mean, man, are they ever doing another one? Like, I don't even know what's going on with that. Well, they put out a, a live thing, uh, it was basically last year, two years ago, uh, Tripticon with the Metropole Orchestra Requiem, live at Roadburn 2019. So they still ex seem to exist. Yeah. But whether they're really still together or not, I'm not 100% certain, but we're... With Mr. Warrior, who who knows really? It seems to things seem to kind of come and go. He seems to move from not very quickly, but he seems to move from band to band, project to project. Yeah. Celtic Frost are there, Celtic Frost are not. Um, Apollyon Sun came and went very quickly as well, which I, I really liked. Um, and I must admit that the two albums, the two studio albums from this band, I think are really pretty special. I really like them. Uh, I think Neves really nailed it with the way that it is. I think they're, they're aggressive, but remarkably accessible. Yeah, I, don't I think found that, that with it as well, yeah. That, yeah, they don't, it's not, they're not pounding. They're not relentless. No, they're this is not like Celtic Frost's last yeah. album, Monotheist, at all, right? I mean, it's yeah. not that. Yeah. <laughs> like if you would have given her that, she would have been like, oh my God, what the hell is this? Because <laughs> that, that's pretty pounding and relentless. The trip to Con is definitely yeah. very artsy in spots, I think. Yeah, I think that's a good word for them, actually. I'll say it is. It's it's more crafted than I'd anticipated. Um, and not that that's a criticism. I'd have to say that you know what he's not before hasn't been. But yeah, it felt more like a an installation. Do you know what I mean? It definitely feels like an art sort of project as opposed to here's another album. And as 
that we see the artworks outstandingly. Yeah, yeah. Good. You know, each other guy got who we know from lots of different things, just very signature style, but it's lovely. It's also, as is the second album as well, a, a nice package as well. It's yeah. really good. So, Neve, I'm, I'm curious what you think of Tom Warrior's vocals overall, because some people hate them, some people really like them, uh, and he usually mixes things up quite a bit, but I'm just curious, like, overall, what do you think? I'm probably sitting in the middle a little bit. I did like it, but then there were points where it kind of itched my brain the wrong way. Um, that's just me. I haven't, as I said, I haven't listened to this kind of stuff in years, so... I'm not sure, but there were points that I really liked the more charismatic, like almost spoken word points. That was probably my favorite part of the style of the album. Cool. So if you uh, had a choice, would you go out and buy this album? Would you maybe just kind of listen to it online every so often or would you completely forget about it and never revisit it again? I'd probably revisit it online. I'm not sure if I'm willing to spend money on it just yet, but I think if I listen to it more times, I might consider it. Okay, cool. So we got a uh, kind of in the middle there. All right, sounds good. So Stephen, what were you given as an assignment from me? Well, I was given a fish album, but not that fish album. No. Oh. <laughs> ah, see. <laughs> you I was going to say, wait a there. second. This does not compute. I, you probably yeah. heard every note he's ever done. So you thought these two are cheating? No, no, no. I was given fish with a ph. There you go. To do. So the 1990 album Lawn Boy. Okay, so I will freely admit that I am a complete novice to this scene. I know nothing about. Well, when you go online, they're described as an alt rock band. Alt rock. They're not alt rock. Not, no, not, alt rock anyway. is not a great term for them at all. No. Do you know? So what Neve described them as was a this is a jam band classic. That that's the correct way to describe this album. That's what this is. This is a jam band doing their thing. Um, as we've discussed on a recent show, in actual fact, Peter, The Grateful Dead are not a band that have ever really been on my radar. And I suppose in many ways, that's why this scene has never really been something that I've investigated in any great sense. I suppose the closest I'd come is Early Clutch, who kind of fall into this realm a little bit, but stylistically are also nothing to do with this whatsoever. So this is the second album from the band. Um, they formed in 1983, I think, in Burlington, Vermont. Uh, and they're still on the go now. They've done 15 albums, I think, yeah, which is... They, they are very busy. Yes, they're very, very busy. busy. And that's with a four-year split, I think. So between 2004, 2008, they weren't a thing. So they're back. They're a four-piece. You've got Trey Anastasio on guitar and vocals, Mike Gordon on bass, Paige McConnell on piano. Now, I don't know if Paige McConnell also plays keyboards elsewhere on the catalogue, but on here, man oh man, it's piano. That's what you get. Yeah, and that's he does all the keyboards, yeah. Right, yeah, because it's piano on this album. Um, and you've got John Fishman on drums, and he's also credited as vacuum cleaner. <laughs> so there you go. Okay. <laughs> So the album opens up with this squirming coil, right? So this is, it's kind of laid back. There's really nice piano. The piano work across the album actually is very impressive. Really liked it. And as I said, it's not really what I'd anticipated when you think about, or when I, in my noviceness, think about jam band kind of music. The guitars are a bit jazzy, and I would describe the vocals as honest. Not necessarily good. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the thing I have with Fish is that the the vocals aren't impressive, but mm -hmm. they fit the music really well. They do, they do, but I I found it a little bit difficult if I was going to be honest with you. But as I say, the piano in this is really uplifting. And there's a cool groove overall. They're great at building a groove. I mean, that's what this is all about: building a groove. They lock in tight, and then at the end of the song, there's some repeated lyrics. Now, this is a theme. This is a theme across this album where they like to repeat a lyric and repeat a lyric. And we'll come back to that aspect because it's more prevalent elsewhere. Um, there are long songs and there are short songs. So Reba is about 12 minutes long. There's loads of different ideas in here. I find some of the sections feel a little welded together. It doesn't always come across as the, the transition is between kind of the groovy sections and then the more riff led sections and then when it all pulls back it kind of starts and stops and starts and stops it doesn't necessarily you don't think oh well that was a 
jam that came together. It's a bit odd in that sense. Um, some of the musical kind of motifs last for ages. Some of them are very short indeed. But it, it is meant to be free form and sometimes to me, and I'm no expert, it feels a little forced in that mm -hmm. sense where you kind of go one bit, another bit, one bit, another bit. And then at the end of the song, there's bag it, tag it, sell it to the butcher in the store, or, okay. <laughs> now that is repeated over and over and over. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's repeated, I think, 25 times at the end of the song alone. <laughs> and I must admit, if I hear that one line of vocals ever again, I will bag it, tag it, and stick it in the bin. It absolutely drove me insane because it just goes over and over. And musically, they're so disconnected, it's unreal, but it reminded me of Ministry, who will build you the biggest, best riff in the world, and then they'll play it to death to the extent that you think, oh, move on. And that's where I got with this. I really needed them to move on. Aspects of this song are fantastic aspects of it I found really tough to be honest mm -hmm. uh, and it's an in, it's a really interesting journey it was a great assignment because it was really not what I'd anticipated at all to be honest with you um you've got things like uh, my sweet one so that's a kind of short countrified romp it's throwaway but in the right way the pianos are great on here again um split open and melt some of the keyboard work on this actually reminded me of gentle giant so that's a yeah. total plus yeah, something to note about them actually is that they have a lot of progressive rock influences in their music. I'd, I'd call them almost like a prog jam band because of just the amount of progressive rock influence that the band themselves have and have spoken about. I mean, they inducted uh, Genesis into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, so they are big fans of, of prog. <laughs> yeah, and that does come through. That's what instantly I managed to get a hold of. I thought, okay, there's stuff in here that I really like. Stuff in here, it, it tends to be little flashes where I think, oh, wow, that's amazing, and then it goes. And then you go, oh, wow, that's amazing, and then it's gone. And yeah. what's in between, to me, isn't always quite as exciting, you know? So there's things like the Oki Pass Ceremony. So that's one minute and 41 seconds. There's almost a Cajun flavor in the guitar here. But same again, there's some great guitar work. John to piano. Trey's, piano. A, Trey's a great player. Yeah. He is. Uh, and the piano, again, it's a theme. I keep mentioning it because it's just so good. Uh, you've got things like Bathtub Gin, and that's based around, I think, Gershwin's, Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue. You hear it in the guitar, you hear it in the piano. It's, sometimes it's quite subtle. Sometimes it's really in your face that that's what they're doing. I really liked that, I have to say. I thought it was excellent. It's very clever musically. Again, the guitar tone doesn't excite me. It's very kind of languid. It almost takes me back into the stuff that my friends were listening to a long time ago, like Dinosaur Jr. and all that kind of, it's just that the guitars, they're not thin, but they're jangly. Yeah, and I see your point, I'm, yeah. Yeah, I don't necessarily connect with that sound. And that's a shame because some of the playing is just really off the scale. It's absolutely fantastic. But when combined to a vocalist that I struggled with a little bit, some of it really works and some of it really doesn't. I mean, there's things like the, t the title track itself, which you would expect most title tracks are the focal point of the album. Mm. It's two minutes thirty of, of bluesy, laid back, floaty. It's a summer's day. It doesn't yeah. necessarily belong on the album, but it's great. <laughs> it's really good. It's one of those things I think. Well, where did that come from? That has nothing to do with what's come. Nothing at all, you know? Um, yeah. And that in itself was really exciting. I, I like an album where you think, wow, okay, where did that come from? And I think that some of the issues are more to do with me than the album, because interestingly, we've touched on before, Peter, that I've got lots of live albums in my collection, but I don't go out and buy all the live albums, buy all of the bands that I like, because they tend not to be what I gravitate towards for whatever reason. So things like, I think it's How the West Was Won, the Led Zeppelin album that came out and everyone was like, wow, we've been waiting all our lives for this. It bores me to tears. 
Because really? I don't need, yeah, wow. I, don't, I, don't, well, I don't need to hear people playing for three weeks. I just don't need to do it. It's just, you know, I mean, it's like... Yeah, between you, Chris Allo, and Martin Popoff, I get, you guys just hate these, like, big, long, sprawling live albums. I love them to death. Wow. All right, well, hey, you know, that's, that's the way it goes, right? It's... I don't know. I mean, and this is really unkind, because I don't actually feel like this about the album. But one of the things I walked away with was, do they use the jam band tag because they can't be asked writing songs? And, I, and, I, and that's really tough. I don't really mean it like that, because there are songs here, there are verses, there are choruses, it's all structured, and it is planned, and it has been jammed. And I think, I went and listened to some of the live stuff on YouTube, because what this album gave me a sense was, was I maybe wasn't getting it, because this is all I've heard. Yeah. The live stuff is outstanding. I'm not yeah. convinced that I would necessarily then think I need to go see them live, but it made something click. So when I came back to the album, I thought, yeah, right, okay, th this is more my baggage that I'm bringing. I yeah. like it. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've got albums that are one song and it's 65 minutes long and there's lots of noodling and there's lots of instrumentation and it's really nuanced. And I think, yeah, that's great, but it kind of moves along. Whereas I felt some of these songs kind of overstay their welcome. And other ones that I think, oh, wow, what is this? This is great. You think, well, it's finished. How did that happen? So the yeah. baggage is mine. The baggage is what I like. The baggage is what I expect from great albums. And I didn't necessarily find all of those things there whilst really quite enjoying an awful lot of what I've heard. At the same time, if I had, a, in my humble opinion, a better vocalist, I might be fully on board here. And that's the difference is... I think if you've seen them live, or if that's more of your, if you'll pardon the pun, jam, then that maybe it doesn't matter so much. He's part of what's going on. As someone that came in new to this going, oh, right, okay, let's discover what this is all about. I was like, he's not very good, is he? <laughs> 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 so there you go. So that's Lawn Boy by Fish in my humble opinion. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll give you my take on Fish. I think you hit on a, a lot of good points there. I, I think Personally, they're a tremendous band, very talented. Uh, I've never fully connected with any of their studio albums, but you, I have a couple of their live albums, and they're terrific. Yeah, because I think I that this is a band, stuff, yeah. right, Neve? I mean, it, a lot of people have said that about the Grateful Dead, who did a whole bunch of studio albums, but to really experience and get them, they just kind of everything that they did well came out better on the stage more so than in the studio. And I think Fish is a perfect example of that as well, because I, I've i owned and listened to many Fish studio albums over the years, and most of them kind of like, yeah, that's all right. I don't see what everybody loves about it. And then I'll hear a live album or a live recording, I'll be like, oh, that there's what it's all about right there. Yeah. But you have to kind of like that stuff because, uh, you know, Widespread Panic and Mo, and I mean, there's plenty of these bands that are out there, you know, hum Humphreys McGee, who... You know, their studio albums are decent, solid, but then you hear them live and it's like, oh, yeah, that's that's what the scene is all about for the most part. Yeah, I kind of got the impression having watched, well, I don't know, quite a lot of the live, not a lot, maybe tons, but quite a lot of live stuff by them. The, the album almost felt like a vehicle because they have to. Does that make sense? Because when you hear things like, was it Reba, the one that's got that repeated lyric over and over, yeah. That's not hammered to death in the same way live. And when the song moves from being whatever, six, seven minutes long to 15, 20, 25 minutes long, it's still not necessarily my thing, but wow, it just feels much more natural. There's a much better flow. Listening to different performances of it, that is an aspect of actually we'll do something different with it tonight. That was quite interesting. It's not just that, and, and I think that possibly they maybe just didn't pick my favourite version of the song and stick that on the record. And when you hear some of the amazing stuff that they can come away with, I don't know if it's made up on the spot or if it's a, a kind of improvisation around a theme, but then I didn't find quite so much excitement within the songs on the album itself in, in that sense. And that's when I started to kind of think, yeah, and the vocals aren't very good too. Whereas live, there was so much excitement going on on stage that I didn't really notice. It didn't matter that the vocals weren't so my taste. And I do think that had I been standing in the audience listening to this, I would be going, oh, wow, that was great. Weren't they great? I wouldn't necessarily come home and 
think I need to go and hoover up all the catalogue, but I'd go see them again next time. <laughs> Do you yeah. know? I know what yeah. you mean, yeah, clearly. And I, I sometimes wonder, and Neve, maybe you can back me up on this one. Um, I, I was just kind of looking at their discography, and they have a lot of studio albums. And I'm wondering, based on how well I know you, Mr. Stephen, uh, and a lot of what you just said, I wonder if an album like Billy Breathes might be something yeah. that would be more his cup of tea. I think so. It's it's a lot more rocky in that sense. Not yeah, much and more about choruses and fully yeah. full songs and less jams and that and that's no and no surprise that that was their kind of big breakthrough and I think their biggest selling studio album. Um, and I'm wondering if you were to go listen to that, if if your opinion would change a little bit. I'm just curious. Well, it's interesting. Now, well, Billy breathes. Was that right? Yeah. Okay, I will go and listen to that because I am intrigued enough to want to know why I didn't get it. Does that mm. th does that make sense? It's yeah. not one that there are plenty of things we've all listened to over the years that you think, you know, three listens in, this isn't very good. That's not what this was at all. Three listens in, I kind of thought, well, this isn't for me, but why? All the components of the, the guitarist is excellent. You know, the, yeah, the piano work is really outstandingly good. It's ear catching and, and it's intricate, but it's for the song. This is not just some guy showing off. Do you know, and when they managed to lock into one of the sections that appealed to me, you didn't just think, oh, yeah, this is okay. I thought, wow, okay, right, stop what I'm doing, stop and listen. And my problem was that quite often you stop and listen and thought, but where did it go? Where did it go? It's gone. <laughs> it's not there yeah. anymore. Yeah. Do you know, and I think that live sometimes that doesn't matter so much because you're in the moment, the atmosphere's there, you know, you're feeding off what they're feeding off and you're feeling the same thing coming off the stage. I found not it's not sterile. It's definitely not sterile. It's maybe not sterile enough for me. It's maybe too. It's not quirky, and it's not wacky. It's not a million miles away. Sometimes though, that repeated tag it bag it. But I'm kind of like, yeah, I'm. I'm checking out now. I'm struggling with this, <laughs> and, and, and I'm not. A, I like a laugh, but I'm not a fan of quirk. Within my music, I sometimes, I, and the same again, it's my hang ups, it's not the bands. I sometimes think, are they laughing with me or at me here? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? And I kind of felt that at the end of that song where you kind of thought, am I meant to be on board with this? Or are they all kind of going, did, did they get, I don't know, we've all been in bands or studios or whatever it may be. And sometimes you get to the end of something and you all look at each other and laugh because you think, wow, that was fantastic, but maybe only for us. If we actually let anyone else hear that, they would go, whoa, what are you guys doing? What was that all about? That felt like one of those moments where you kind of thought, did they get to the end of that? Someone hit stop and they went, oh, <laughs> oh, that was amazing. Wasn't that brilliant? Stick it out. Maybe you not. Know, maybe, maybe I've missed the point completely, but that, that it felt close to that for me. Uh, and I got to the end of it and thought, oh, I'm going to have to listen to this again. Because <laughs> I mean, I have listened to the album loads of times and there are aspects definitely I'll do that again with it so that, that was my journey with Lawn Boy <laughs> All right. I mean, yeah, I, I would say yeah go go check the other studio album out but for me personally I mean when I want to listen to this band I generally reach for the, the double up live album a live one it's called from 1995 okay. and that came out right at kind of like the height of their popularity they were just starting to really take off as a band and you know again it, Stephen, you, you may not like the live album either because it's filled with like 12 and 20 and 30 minute long songs and some that are a bit shorter, but man, the band sounds vibrant and confident. And, you know, you want to hear some great guitars and keyboards and, and tons of groove. I mean, it's, it's all there. And to me, that's what Fish is all about. But again, it's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. The jam yeah. scene is not for everybody. It's really it's an acquired different. taste. Yeah. But they're one of the best of, at what they do. I, I will say, and you know, Trey Anastasio is, uh, you know, terrific, terrific player. Are they indicative of the scene? Because I know that they are one of the ones that are held up as, you know, one of the, the shining lights of of the jam band scene. Are they indicative? Is is there a jam band sound, or is it a jam band ethos? I'm not the biggest 
historian on the jam band scene because I probably have only listened to a you know maybe 10 or so bands that make up their that scene I will say most of the bands that I have heard they're all pretty different from each other I don't I don't get a lot of you know these bands that sound exactly the same like for instance like Mo sounds nothing like Fish uh, Government Mule is called a jam band, right? They don't sound they like yes, any. I like, I like and, them. You know, and you like, like Government Mule, yeah. right? Um, I don't think Umphreys McGee sounds anything like Fish. And you know, there are plenty of others. And I think they all bring, I mean, for if you ever listen to Earthless, Earthless is kind of a jam band, right? But they're they're more kind of like on from the stoner uh, aspect of it. And it's I, so for me, you just have to love bands that just go off into whatever you know universe they're going to go off into but they groove at the same time uh but a lot of them just don't they don't really sound some take more of like an r&b approach some take more of like a countryfied approach some go a jazz way some go a blues way and i think that's the cool and some you know umphreys and fish are both prog fans right both those bands really love a lot of classic prog so i think the, the cool thing about the jam scene is it's it's very wide open and it encompasses a lot of different styles. And I think that's what a lot of the fans really enjoy about it because you can, you know, you could be a guy who's into, or, or a woman who's into, you know, more bluesy stuff. And there's plenty of jam bands that fall into that thing. You could like jazz and there's a lot of the jam bands who come from a more, you know, jazz perspective. So I, you know, I often think that I'm surprised I don't listen to more of it, but maybe it's because, I'm having a hard time keeping up with all the shit that I need to keep up with, right? For what I do listen to, right? So, yeah. Um, but I, you know, we there are jam festivals that happen here in New York, like well, pre-pandemic, like every year. And I'm, I've often said, I just need to go to this because it's like a weekend of like you know fifty bands, and it, I mean, it, to me, it almost sounds like overload. But I think it'd be kind of fun. But yeah. So in saying all that, uh, yeah, I mean, this is not for everybody. It's not for everybody. So would you, what would you do with uh, this particular album, Stephen? Would you go out and buy it? Would you maybe revisit it again online? Or would you just say, the hell with fish, not fish. Uh, that I'm done with that. Well, as ever, Peter, I'm not going to give you a straight answer because that's no I fun. I think so. Okay. <laughs> so what will I do? with? What, I can give you a straight answer. With this album, it's probably a not revisit it. It's probably a forget it but not necessarily with a band. And that I'm genuinely interested now that I've got a different recommendation to think, okay, let's go and find out more. And I have listened to some more of, and even the material from this album online that's live and thought, yeah, okay, I could get into this. I maybe have to work a little at it, but I could get into this. So it's been an excellent assignment. It, actually, it really has been a great assignment because it's the sort of band that has been up on the edge of my radar for years, years and years and years. And for whatever reason, with some bands, you just never actually go and listen to them. Yeah. So as soon as Neve was like, what's oh, fish? I was like, oh, okay, I'm up for this. This sounds absolutely fantastic. And there's aspects of it are brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Aspects of it really not for me. So I'm going to do my own homework and branch off into different areas. So I will not forget it, but I won't necessarily listen to this one. Cool. All right. Well, hey, this is this has been an eye-opening episode because we got, you know, both of you introduced to stuff that's not normally your cup of tea, but uh, I think you both had your eyes open a little bit to each one of these artists and bands. So that's what it's all about. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We are on Facebook. We are on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. Coming up next week, I believe we have Scott Berry going head to head with Eric Porter. So that is uh, next week, next Sunday. So stay tuned for that. Uh, Neve, what's going on in your, uh, what's, how's things going on your channel? Again, anything new coming up over the next uh, couple of weeks? I've got a bit of a, a project coming up. I've got a new series that I'm planning to, to release very soon, but I'm gonna keep it quiet for now. Okay. Um, but hopefully it'll be enjoyable. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. And uh, you can uh, catch Stephen. Do you want to give uh you want to give folks a little tidbit of what's coming up next Saturday on the UK Connection? Oh, well, I'm going to talk about something that I never thought I would actually talk about in public. I'm going to talk about Gene Simmons' asshole. <laughs> anyway, moving swiftly along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to do one of those love it or loathe it shows. We're going to focus on uh, Mr. Simmons' two solo efforts. Long time apart really quite different 
and very similar in many ways. So one of us loves them. I, I wonder who that could be. Yeah, I and wonder. One of us not quite so sure. I wonder who that could be. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, that's the UK connection next weekend. Sounds good. So there we have it, everybody. Look forward to that. Uh, what do we have, what do we have coming up here on the channel? Let's see. Uh, oh, tomorrow, of course, the Hudson Valley Squares. Tuesday in the prog seat where we'll be doing uh, part two of our look at our uh, Desert Island prog albums, our favorite 10 albums of all time. We're going to do uh, numbers five through one. Wednesday, new album review day today, uh, new day, uh, do, new album review day on the channel. We've got, uh, I'm pretty sure we're getting to the new Star One, the new Steve Vai, hopefully the new Amorphous. We've got new 10, new uh, Jonas Lindbergh, new Voivod, new De Virgilio Morrison Jennings, uh, and all sorts of other stuff. In the, so we'll see what we can get to this week. Um, and everything else will be the week after. Uh, we've got Thursday is the Monsters Den, Friday morning at the Funhouse with Martin Popoff, and then Saturday, the UK Connection, like uh, Stephen just mentioned. So lots happening here on the channel for uh, Neve the Prog Nerd and Stephen Reed. I am Pete Pardo. Please subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell. We also have links below to our merch page where you can get cool new shirts like this. You can also get cool Neve the Prog uh, uh need the prog nerd shirts man it's too early can't talk today so all available on the same uh page there and uh, we both share the same uh merch creator which is kind of neat and yeah. uh yeah other than that we'll see you soon for neve and steven i am peter pardo see you all later on take care bye-bye have a good weekend bye-bye